Nadia Samdin. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'll continue building on the Honourable Member Tin Pei Ling by talking about MDW cares for our seniors. By 2050, almost half of Singapore's total population will be at least 65. As such, care support is of utmost concern not just for our elders, but for their adult children who bear the responsibility to look after their own children and their aged parents. It has been said in these chambers that the true costs of caregiving affect certain groups disproportionately. During the closing session of the conversations on Singapore women's development, Prime Minister acknowledged that women often tend to have additional caregiving responsibilities for both young and old, and that more can be done to support them emotionally and financially. Dependence on such unpaid family caregivers, who are usually women, is no longer tenable. In the late 70s, the Foreign Maid Scheme was launched to enable families to employ MDWs and support women's participation in the workplace. In May this year, it was announced that all new entry approvals for work pass holders from countries with higher risk of COVID-19 will be temporarily halted, including Indonesia, Philippines and Myanmar, all three of which provide the bulk of Singapore's MDWs. Many of us would have had residents appeal through us to allow MDWs to secure entry approvals to care for both young and old in Singapore. With dual income households now forming more than half of all married couples as of 2020, an MDW is often considered an important part of fulfilling caregiving needs for families from various income backgrounds. Let's take stock briefly. Aside from MDWs, what caregiving solutions are available for seniors? My focus today. AIC has developed a network of community care services which fall under three broad themes, home care, day care and stay in care. These initiatives are greatly appreciated. However, they can come across as piecemeal with multiple application processes and many adult children rely on an MDW as an all-in-one solution to care for their aged parents. There is almost a quarter of a million MDWs here on work permits as of June 2021. And despite the pandemic, some reports have suggested that the demand for MDWs remains steady if not increased, even as costs trended upwards. MDWs continue to be important as part of our caregiving landscape for a few key reasons. First, seniors have complex needs and applying for different segregated services can be more expensive and inconvenient. Round trips for medical transport services are between $62 and $90 before subsidies, which can be unaffordable for some. In Cheng San's Lita, I'm very grateful for community befrienders who often step in to accompany seniors who are fall risks to their hospital appointments. On the other hand, home personal care costs cost approximately $20 per hour prior to means test subsidies and referrals from hospitals or polyclinics are often required. With higher collective costs and sometimes incomplete combinations of services, hiring an MDW is often a coherent solution. Second, our seniors tend to prize independence and have preferences against institutionalized care. The perceived loss of independence in a nursing home is something they are concerned about, and so children's hire MDW as this support is compatible with their filial duty to meet their parents' desires to age in place without compromising on safety. One possible solution is the model recently announced by HDB, MOH and MND, the community care apartments to encourage independent living, and I'm very much looking forward to see how care can be better aggregated so our seniors live with dignity in their golden years. Lastly, prior to the pandemic, families often turned to MDWs as a more timely solution due to unfamiliarity with existing schemes and the limited time in finding suitable caregiving options. Some have also raised concerns about the waiting list for subsidised elder sitting services and nursing homes and looking for suitable step-down care services causes stress for families. Many also find it risky to wait and see if their loved ones qualify for a subsidised space or not. Mr Speaker, sir, MDWs will likely continue to be part of our caregiving landscape. Closer attention should be paid to the matching and training of our MDWs. There are stories of MDWs experiencing burnout when expectations of their jobs are mismatched with the tasks required. A study conducted by Aware and Home shared this sentiment. 
pointing to the lack of information provided by employers and verification by employment agencies. We could look at establishing a more thorough needs assessment, which can be verified by employment agencies through submitted health records. Should there be a mismatch of skills and job requirements, employers can then apply for the caregiver's training grant to upskill the MDW. Another proposal would be expanding the home caregiving grant. Currently, the grant provides a $200 monthly payout to families supporting their loved ones with permanent moderate disability. Qualifying for the grant requires means testing and assessment of the care recipient's ability to carry out activities of daily living or ADL. These measures ensure that the ones with the most needs receive the grant, but it leaves a gap where vulnerable groups can fall into. For instance, a dual-income couple with an elderly mother and two young children may find themselves needing an MDW, but they may fail to qualify for the HCG because their elderly mother only requires assistance to perform two ADLs despite having other chronic health issues. Even though hiring an MDW may be the least expensive option, this sandwich class of families will be paying the full price. We could explore a points-based system where the number of ADLs that require assistance and household per capita monthly income can be tiered. A combination of these scores can provide a fuller picture for families in greater financial need versus separating the financial and functional criteria. In addition, we can also explore compensating part-time family caregivers better under the grant. In Hawaii, for example, the Kupuna Caregivers Assistance Act provides a daily stipend to a caregiver who is also working 30 hours a week. This allows caregivers to continue working in some capacity or dial back at work while assuming caregiving responsibilities. In closing, I wish to acknowledge and highlight the challenges faced by many Singaporeans during this pandemic in employing MDWs to support caregiving needs. Some have described being at their wits end, finishing up annual leave to race to their loved one's side. One resident shared that while waiting for the entry approval of an MDW to be approved, she would take turns to care for her elderly mother, who was a fall risk, with her brother, and both siblings live separately from their mother. I thank AIC who had seen her to discuss care options, but none were suitable as her mother had an illness which prevented her from going into a home and in any event strongly didn't want to, prizing independence. The daughter felt a deep sense of filial piety and did not insist. However, when her brother and his family was on quarantine order, the 14 days back then which ensued were a nightmare for her as she struggled to balance work and caregiving and even thought about quitting her job. I know many families have faced this dilemma too and hope we can look ahead to ensure that our caregiving needs are met, women are allowed to participate actively in the workforce, and we also support our MDWs to be more equipped and better prepared for the roles they take on in our families. Thank you. Mr. Sik Gan Huang. 